has been paid for by the WZWA Network. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the WZWA Network and our review show here of NXT Vengeance Day 2022. I'm your host, California. A joy to be with you all once again. And uh, conspicuous by his absence right here is my co-host, Juicy Boy. Unfortunately, due to, I guess you could say, reasons beyond mine and his control, uh, Juicy Boy will not be joining me on any reviews for at, the, at least the next couple of months or so. Uh, he should be back in time for WrestleMania. So with some of the upcoming uh, pay-per-view reviews, I will be having some special guests joining me for those episodes. So stay tuned for that. But I'm going to try and do this by myself. I've never done it before, but we'll see how we go. It's NXT Vengeance Day. Um, I have been watching some of the the TV leading up to this show, just a, just a couple of episodes, and I'm, we'll jump right into it right here, right now, uh, with AT. Hey, hey, how you fucking doing, Tom? How you fucking doing? Tony D'Angelo taking on Pete fucking Dawn. He's, he's, he's Pete fucking Dawn, the bruiser away. And a weaponized cage match. I like the idea of a weaponized cage match. I think that's, it's a nice step up, something interesting, you know, and, and definitely a step up from having a, uh, a crowbar on a pole match. Um, I don't know if, if Pete Dunn is going to be uh, going to the main roster at any point, but judging from the finish of this match and what took place later in the show, I guess he is sticking around NXT. I thought he and Tommaso would be off very soon, uh, post their losses to uh, Tony and, of course, Bron Breaker uh, a short while ago. But it looks like they're sticking around NXT, and I think they're necessary in NXT right now. Um, I thought the match was, was off to a great start with the broken chair, followed up with that falcon arrow into the trash can from D'Angelo. Um, I'm, I'm fucking digging Tony. I'm digging Pete Dunne. Um, one thing, another problem that I've always had, and I've mentioned before on our reviews, is, is the fucking camera work from WWE. Why is it so fucking fucked? You know, the, the, the cameraman doesn't stop moving like he's always, like even when it's like a still shot, the cameraman's still kind of like doing this. It does my fucking head in. And when you notice it and you can't, you can't unsee it, you just can't fucking stop looking at it. You can't no stop noticing it, and it starts to give you a fucking headache. The cameraman just constantly moving around, and then the zoom in, zoom in and out. Every time there's a weapon shot, the zoom in and out like that. Fuck enough. Whose idea was this? Kevin Dunn, you beaver-looking motherfucker, if it's you, go fuck yourself, bro. Stop it with this bullshit. Just shoot it like you used to in 99. Okay? You got fancy HD cameras, very good. But stop fucking having the cameraman... Act like they've got fucking Parkinson's. It's enough already. Anyway, it, it made me sick. I don't know why they fucking do it. Um, but I must have to um, say, you know, these two were going for it early on in this matchup. The superplex off the cage. Um, again, with the camera work, when the initial bump took place, I want to see the full bump from top to bottom. I want to see a nice wide shot for something like that. You know, they've got the shot from below and I didn't really get to see the impact very well. So fuck, enough of this bullshit. Um, done with the counters, uh, with his arms behind his back and those cable ties from Tony D'Angelo. I th found that to be very creative. Um, I like the touch of Tony being stuck in that guillotine choke whilst, you know, Dunn's arms are behind his back. And uh, I like the fact that he managed to get pliers out of the toolbox and cut the... Uh, the cable ties to get out of that guillotine choke. Again, very, very creative. It was a great opener. Uh, Powerbomb through the table was solid. Uh, I thought it was over with the bitter end after the cricket bat shot to the back. They got me there, I must admit. So when you get me, uh, you know, there's massive props to you. Great finish. Good for Dunn to get the win there. Uh, I wonder, you know, what the next thing is for him. I know he might be going after Carmelo Hayes in that North American Championship, as we saw later on. Um, but, you know, we'll have to wait and see. Um, but digging both of these guys and their work in NXT right now. 
the next segment, excuse me, sorry, sorry. Fuck me, bro. Uh, the next segment, Cora Jade wakes up in bed. Uh, she's she's wearing a beanie. Um, bullshit. Uh, you, you sleep all those hours in bed and you put a beanie on your head. I guarantee you by the time you wake up, that beanie is no longer on your skull. Um, I do like NXT's film-like vignettes. I think that they're very creative. They had this little segment here with her and Raquel Gonzalez doing a bit of training for the female side of the uh, uh, Dusty Classic Tag Team Tournament. Speaking of that, the Creed Brothers with a promo, not bad. Uh, and I think at this point in time in the show, I'm thinking to myself, I think the Creed Brothers really need this win uh, because I don't really like MSK. I think they're talented, but I don't find them funny. Uh, and I don't really blame them. I just think you're only as good as the material written for you. And I think the material written for them uh, and people like Indy Hartwell haven't been the best in the last few months. So it's not on the performers. It is on the writing. Uh, coming up next, my homegirls, Toxic Attraction, baby. Took on Persia Parada and Indy Hartwell for the NXT Women's Tag Team Championship, motherfucker. Um, I have to say, JC Jane, my God, bro. Every time she comes out, she kind of grinds her hips. It really revs my engine, bro. It just, it does, does things to me that I can't be too descriptive of on this show. Uh, Toxic Attraction, as far as I'm concerned, aside from, from Breaker, they are the face of NXT 2.0. I keep them dominant for a long fucking run, a long time before uh, going to the main roster and, and running roughshod over them. I wouldn't break them up for like three years, you know. I'd have them really... You know, like like the length of evolution, how long they were together for before having someone like Gigi Dolman break out and feud with Mandy. Uh, that, I think, is something that, you know, if you want long-term booking, that's what you should do with Toxic Attraction. I see money in these ladies. Uh, really solid work here from both teams in this tag team championship matchup. Uh, I haven't been big on tag team wrestling recently, so the fact that I actually gave a shit... Uh, goes to show how well these women performed in this match. Um, I was really into it, uh, and I'm glad that my homegirl's toxic attraction won that shit, uh, and Gigi Dolan is sexy. Thank you. Uh, backstage, Amari Miller and Wendy Chu uh, are having a conversation. Wendy Chu asks Amari if she'll be her tag team partner in the Dusty Classic. Uh, Amari is very, very overly apologetic that she uh, can't do so because she's already got a partner. Uh, I thought uh, Amari Miller needs a little bit of work with her acting. It was a little cheesy, a little over the top. Just dial it back a little bit. Uh, Wendy Chu then going up to uh, Dakota Kai. Obviously, Dakota's got some sort of mental illness gimmick going on right now. Uh, if someone's talking to themselves like that, there's a problem. You know, uh, maybe she needs a prop like Al Snow had Head or Perry Satin had Moppy. I know those, well, Head got over, but people made fun of Moppy. I don't know why, you know. And I'm popped for Chavo with Pepe as well. Uh, you know, so maybe, maybe give her something to talk to. I don't know. Um, Grayson Waller arrives to get LA Knight arrested. He's got cops uh, with him. Clearly they're extras. I don't know why, but I was laughing when the two extras rocked up in there little pretend uniforms. I don't know what made it funny. It just was funny to me. I was like, they, they're not cops. They're not cops. Um, followed up from this, we have a segment with Brooks and Jensen at the bar. This is the first time I enjoyed anything with those two. Found it to be an entertaining segment and uh, interesting to see uh, a little bit into their lives, their love lives, I suppose you could say. Um, and, you know, just started to get to know the characters a little bit more. But if you ask me which one was which, I wouldn't be able to tell you who Brooks was or who Jensen was because I just can't fucking remember. Anyway, <clears throat> moving forward, LA Knight comes out. Here we go. I think this guy has superstar written all over him, man. Uh, Grayson Waller interrupts, of course. Uh, he wants to get LA Knight arrested. Uh, I think Grayson's doing some great stuff. He's so unlike, unlikable uh, with his stupid voice. Yes, he's Australian, um, but just the way he talks, uh, he's so irritating. So I'm, I'm really, uh, really into his work at the moment. I think this is a pretty solid feud. Um, it ends with uh, uh, LA Knight 
getting the upper hand here on Grayson Waller. Uh, so good little segment. And I was uh, laughing at Grayson Waller talking to the police officers as they were leaving the arena uh, as he's gone, what, where are you going? It's just the Australian accent, man. I don't know. When I hear it on TV, it really stands out way more than seeing anyone in person. So uh, anyway, backstage, Dexter Loomis visits Persia Parada and Indy backstage to take Indy away. Uh, and then Duke Hudson, another Australian, rocks up to take out Persia. Nice. I like it. I like it. It's, it's nice to see the men and women characters actually fucking, you know, connect on the show and cross paths and have, you know, these types of moments. Just, it's, you don't see it on Raw. You don't, you barely see this shit. Of course they would fucking be, this is, if this were real, you know, the, the, the men and women would be connecting quite a lot on the show and sexy moments would be happening. You know, nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with things that are sexy. Just, just put that out there. Um, and I love when uh, Persia was taken away by Duke Hudson. Wade Barrett said, oh, Persia Perot is about to get lucky. I just like that. Wade always gets me with that shit. Uh, Champa, Tommaso Champa with a promo. That was good stuff moving forward. Not much to add there. Uh, Carmelo Hayes, Cameron Grimes, North American Championship matchup. Uh, I'm still not... 100% huge on Carmelo Hayes at the moment. Um, I just feel like I've seen this kind of character a million times. I kind of find Trick Williams more entertaining, but I'm still going to keep giving Carmelo a chance. Again, you are only as good as the creative given to you. Um, and I had a thought, you know, with this Cruiserweight Championship and how it was unified with the North American Championship. What confuses me so much is... 205 Live is still a show. There's no Cruiserweight Championship. Do you think maybe it's time to rebrand that thing? What are you doing with that show? I mean, if it were me, I would probably make it a secondary NXT show, but maybe, maybe, maybe focus on different characters like a Malik Blade, etc., cetera, uh, with storylines with kind of, you know, people, you know, uh, on the roster that don't really have much of a direction going on the show you know if someone's not going to be on nxt this week then let's let's rebrand it to be like nxt something or other you know you've got nxt and then you've got like their secondary show kind of like maybe a version of sunday night heat or some shit like that i don't know whatever um but maybe it'll be it would be cool to give it to nxt and, and have them really do something with it. I know people from NXT perform on 205 Live. I just, it just needs rebranding. It needs rebranding and it needs, you know, a purpose. You know, I, I can't even imagine that there's anyone out there that is like every week I have to see 205 Live. I can't imagine anyone out there that's like a diehard 205 Live fan. I mean, if you are out there, please leave a comment in the comments section here on this video because I, can't even fathom why that would be appealing to anybody. It's just, it's insane. Um, anyway, moving forward, Cameron Grimes, I think he's a great character. Um, he's really over with that NXT audience. I feel like the match built really well from the beginning with all of the suspense building up. When you finally got to the beginning of the suspense, the false finishes, this was some good shit, man. Um, one thing, another thing I like to say, and I've said many times before, the crowd with that lazy, this is awesome. It's like they've said it so many times. They just go through the motions with that chant now. If it's really awesome, fucking scream it at the top of your lungs. Don't, don't, give, a, don't give me a lackluster fucking this is awesome chant. Come on. Um, the crowd came unglued for the crossbody false finish uh, from Grimes on Carmelo Hayes. Um, but I did think to myself, this is probably a foregone conclusion. Uh, or as Juicy Boy would say at FGC, go fuck yourself, bro. Um, uh, I, I, I just thought, yeah, Carmelo Hayes is not losing it at this stage. He's barely even defended the fucking thing. Um, so anyway, it was a great finish to the match. Uh, Hayes retains the championship. Uh, and I have to say, this is probably the best performance I've seen of Carmelo. 
Uh, it looks like he'll be moving forward into something with Pete Dunn, but I kind of felt like him and Cameron Grimes probably had a little bit more juice in the tank. Uh, we'll see where Cameron Grimes goes next. After this, we have a backstage segment with Kayleigh. Fucking, fucking rare. She's from fucking Scotland. She's from fucking Scotland. She's back there with Io Shirai. She, she convinces Io to use the baseball bat and smash some shit. Um, and my question is, why is KLR allowed to make such a mess at the arena every week? And she just walks away from it. And I find stuff like that very comical. I love it. You know, she's just smashing shit with this baseball bat. Never gets in trouble. Like the other week with Mandy Rose had that photo shoot within the NXT building and Kaylee Ray just destroys all of the fucking equipment. And I'm like, this isn't Mandy Rose's equipment. This is this is the company's equipment. So why why is she not getting in trouble for this? I love stuff like that. I love overthinking shit. Um, I like the Dusty cameo. Before we get to the Dusty Classic final, MSK and the Creed Brothers. Really excited about this one. I think this is the Creed Brothers' time. I've become quite the fan of these guys. One thing I wanted to say before I dig into this matchup is um, a lot of people on Twitter have been saying things like um, they should give NXT to Cody because, like, it was Dusty's thing. And, and I'm thinking to myself, like, no. Why would you do that? Why would, why would that be a thing? People need to understand Cody is not his dad. Okay, Dustin is not his dad. His dad was a very special guy who learned directly from, you know, legends like Eddie Gilbert. You know, he learned from the best. So that's why Dusty was who he was. Dusty was an ideas man. Not every person is an ideas man. And when you look at what happened with Cody and AEW and all the stories that he was a part of that he had a big hand in, you can see why there were flaws in a lot of his stories and why things didn't make sense because not everybody is a creative mind. Now in the ring, Cody's fantastic. And I'm sure in his uh, nightmare factory, he's a great teacher and he's a great mentor to younger uh, prof professional wrestlers, but not everyone has that creative mind to come up with stories. You can't just do things for the sake of it. You can't just do things because you think this might be cool or whatever. If you don't really think in depth about it and make sure, does it make sense that I have a weigh in against Anthony Agogo in a match that has no weight restrictions? Does it make sense for me to have a fake retirement on a whim because I just randomly lost to Malachi Black? Does it make sense to do these types of things? You don't just do things just because it sounds cool. you got to make sure it makes sense. And if, if someone is doing this and putting this on television and can't tell that there's a problem with it, he's not a creative mind. So no, Cody won't be fucking running NXT or be put in charge and given his dad's old job back. <clears throat> it's not going to fucking happen. So people out there, you got to get that shit out of your mind. Shawn Michaels and, and fucking... Uh, Albert are doing a fine enough job. Trust me. They're in great hands there. Okay. Moving forward. Uh, <clears throat> the Creed brothers should win this. Uh, and they should start getting deep within the title hunt for the tag titles. Very excited to see what comes of that. I think Julius Creed has great raw strength. Motherfucker. I was very impressed. Um, Sick of these referees with the trendy hairstyles, man. What the fuck is going on with that? I mean, <clears throat> whatever happened to balding Jim Corderas or like plain Jane Mike Sparks? What happened to those types of referees? What's with all these referees with the fucking fade? Enough. Okay, enough. Enough of the pretty boy shit. Okay. Uh, the ringside area, I have to say, is so tight in the NXT... Uh, building whatever it is the the fucking capital center or whatever it's very very tight um uh ringside area uh, i don't have much notes in this the creeds win solid finish um the only thing i would have changed about all of this was during the celebration i would have had the uh, manager mr bivens given a fat fucking cigar and get sprayed with champagne by the rest of the diamond mine. I would have gone over the top with it. I would have made it like they've won the NBA championship. 
That's just me. Promo for Nikita Lyons. I am pumped to see this chick because damn girl, baby got back. <laughs> um, and I loved when she said, I'm a whole lot of woman and I wrote down, you damn right, girl. She's debuting next week, looking to see what uh, is going on with that character. Very interested. Um, <clears throat> moving forward, only a few more things to go here. Uh, the tag team champions, the NXT tag team champions, Imperium in the ring. Um, and I thought to myself, this, this tag team will definitely have a big gay following. I guarantee you. I don't know why. That's just what I thought. I guarantee you they have a big gay following. Um, Solo Sokoa interrupts. Inter interesting development. Um, and I also wrote down, I don't give a fuck what anyone says. Gunter is a better name than Walter. I'm sorry, but Walter sounds like, you know, the name of a, you know, just a regular guy. Gunter sounds a lot more, um, I mean, just more suited to the character. Uh, so people need to get off their high horse and, and um, uh, untangle their, their underwear. Moving forward, okay? So, yeah, whatever happened there, good stuff. I'm sure this Koa Gunter thing will be fucking hard-hitting and good. Um, <clears throat> Ziggler backstage with Mackenzie Mitchell, who's looking very pretty in pink. Uh, Ziggler finally getting to do work that he could do on Raw as a singles guy, but, of course, his trajectory has already been decided there. That's what pisses me off. Ziggler, at this point of his career, could have had so many um, amazing WrestleMania moments, singles feuds with great blow-offs, great stories, but instead he's been, his, his prime of his career has been completely fucking wasted. So we're going to see the best is Dolph Ziggler right here in NXT in the next few weeks. Um, so Pete Dunne appears backstage, congratulates Carmelo Hayes on still being the North American champion. Okay. Finally, we get to our main event here on the NXT Vengeance Day review. Thank you for sticking with me. This feels like it's been a bit of a whirlwind. I'm used to having a back and forth. I'm used to having Juicy Boy fucking interrupt me every two seconds. Um, so I hope this has been good enough for you all out there. Um, Santos Escobar with uh, Legado del Fantasma uh, takes on the NXT champion, Bron Breaker, the future of the business. I don't give a fuck what anyone says. This guy hasn't even had 100 matches and he's already this good. That's fucking crazy, bro. Um, I have to say, yeah, this is all for Bron Breaker here. We all know he's going to win this matchup. He hit this powerful Steiner line at one stage early on and I haven't seen someone with that much power in a clothesline. I hadn't seen someone just, the way he launched himself at Santos was just, I hadn't seen that in a long time. It really stood out to me. A hell of a clothesline there. Um, great fire with Brun on his comeback. Santos did well with his heat. Um, just look at this Bron Breaker guy. He's a fucking man. I mean, shit. It's just, it's, it's about believability with me, man. You know, there's a lot of people out there saying, oh, wrestling's, wrestling's fucking, wrestling's evolved. Wrestling's changed, you know. It, it doesn't matter about the site. Yeah, it does. It does. Believability helps with the suspension of disbelief. That's the whole point of the whole fucking thing. Um, I popped for Ziggler's super kick on him. Awesome. It was a great false finish. He knew Santos wasn't going to win, but it was a great false finish. I loved when Ziggler reacted. He's such a pro. He reacted in such a big way purposely making a kid laugh at ringside by screaming like no 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 over again grabbing the the guardrail and shaking his head it, see this is the exaggeration that you need this is what a real performance is all about so pumped to see Ziggler there uh Tommaso Ciampa makes the save at this stage uh, with Escobar closing in there was some great drama heading towards the finish of this match a huge bucket spear from Bron Breaker, the straps come down, he picks him up for that big military press, that gorilla press into a power slam, it's all over, a great win, Bron is the fucking man, next week we get Grayson Waller taking on LA Knight, we get Dolph Ziggler and Tommaso Ciampa 
on NXT next week as well. It looks like a stacked show. Um, I have to say, I really did enjoy Vengeance Day. Uh, it's not the best show of the year so far, but it was pretty good. Um, so when it comes to my final thoughts, fantastic show. And for my final rating, I'm going to have to give this one a seven and a half out of 10. It wasn't quite an eight, but it wasn't quite a seven. I thought all the action was great. There were no real bad moments. There were no real, you know, botches. Um, a very good show. So NXT, I think, is doing quite well right now. And I think people need to give it a bit of a chance and, and start to get to know the characters. And, you know, I think this is what NXT needed to be the whole time, to be perfectly honest with you. And I know that might disappoint people out there to hear, but I wasn't a fan of the old NXT. Um, I'd never had any interest in watching it. But now I really enjoy the show. It's not it's not 100% for me because I'm more of like an Attitude Era, you know, 90s WCW, 90s ECW guy. Um, but, I, you know, I have to say, out of all the products at the moment, I think I enjoy NXT 2.0 and Impact the most. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen, my review show here for the WCWA network of NXT Vengeance Day 2022. I'm California, and we will see you down the road. Thank you.